Hello again, this is Joe Gilder with HomestudioCorner.com, and I want to talk to you today about Audio Suite plugins. Uh, now, this is a Pro Tools specific um, feature, but all other DAWs have something similar to it, so it might still be worth your while to watch this, even if you're not a Pro Tools user. So, what are we talking about here? Well, there's obviously you use plugins when you're recording. That's a given, right? You you have your EQs, you have your compressors, all sorts of things like that. But what if you're doing some sort of a collaboration? The idea for this video came from uh, my buddy Travis, who is a drummer, and he does a lot of online collaboration with other artists uh, all over the world. And he'll they'll send him a mix of the song, and then he'll record drums over that and then send those to them. But he had some people asking that he do some mixing on the drums themselves. Uh, not mixing the entire song, just mixing the drums, adding EQ and compression to the individual pieces of the drum kit and sending those to them. And so he wanted to know how to do that and to ensure that his settings get carried over to um, his client session. Well, the problem there is, let's say, let's just pretend this is the, this is the session here. And we're playing along, and so we've got EQ and compression on several tracks, and we've got it set exactly how we want it. Let's focus in on specifically this vocal track here. So I've got EQ set, and I've got compression set. Now, the problem is when I send this to the other person, if they don't have Pro Tools, if I send them this Pro Tools session with the audio files, then they're not going to have these EQ settings. Uh, if they have a different version of Pro Tools, or maybe I'm using Waves plugins here and they don't own those particular plugins, then they're not going to have those settings. And so you're doing them a disservice by not having those available to them. And this is a good example of sending them the file with the settings, sending them the audio file with the EQ and compression settings already added to the audio itself. Now, the way you do that is with what's called Audio Suite. Now, the plugins here. These are RTAS plugins, as you can see here, RTAS. That stands for Real-Time Audio Suite. So these plugins are processing the audio in real time. The audio is passing through here, and it's doing all the EQ and compression. Well, the other thing you can do is you can take these settings, and let me show the plugins here, make life a little easier, and you can apply those to the individual file. So let's take, this is one song right here, and if we turn these plugins off, then the vocal itself is... It's in the key. Okay, this is a live recording. Let me find the middle. It's been... mm, let's go back. Here we go. Okay, so then we turn the plugins on. But we need, to, we need to apply these settings to this audio file itself. So let me separate this file real quick. And let's say this is the song right here that we want to apply this to. Well... What we do is we use an Audio Suite plugin. So we come up here to Audio Suite and find the plugin that we're using. This works for any plugin that you have. So we're using the EQ3 7 band EQ. So we come and find that here. And we'll look at this one and this one, and the settings are very different. Now you could go through and turn every knob until they're exactly the same, but I'll show you a quicker way. You can simply copy the settings. So come here, hit Copy Settings, come over here, under Preset, and click Paste Settings. Bam, exactly the same settings. Now you'll notice you can't listen to this. This isn't an actual real time plugin where we've selected the region and we've opened an audio suite plugin and we can actually process this plugin with this EQ setting. So when we click process, it's going to actually change this recorded audio to have that setting. And I just lost it. Where'd it go? Okay. So if we zoom in, you're going to watch this. This is going to change a little bit when we hit process. Okay, so now it has added the EQ settings to this audio file. So now this has been EQ'd. If we double click and look at the name of the region, it says it's called 7EQA. So it changed, it actually created a new audio file where it was that audio plus this EQ. Well, now we need to add the compressor too, right? Do the same thing. Here's the compressor, those are the settings. Come in here, open up an audio suite version of that exact same plugin, and it is the Digirack compressor. There we go. And we just do the same thing. Come over here, preset, copy settings, preset, paste settings. Bam. Now if we process, you'll notice it takes a second to process that. And then this region's going to change again. So now it's been processed with the EQ, and then again it's been processed with the compressor. It's the same thing as bouncing these in real time, but it saved you a lot of time. You don't have to do anything in real time now. All you had to do was pull up those plugins and apply these settings. So now, if I take this region this audio file and send it to my client, he has exactly what he needs. 
you'll see this is the region right here. I can take this and I can come over here to export regions as files. And I can export this as a WAV file, uh, a mono WAV file, send it out on its merry way. And it's got the EQ and compression settings that I used. And no matter who opens this file, as long as they can open a standard audio file, it's going to have the EQ and the compression already on the file. So it's a great fail-safe if you're collaborating with people online or if you're just sending files to somebody else that you want them to be able to um, have the exact settings that you wanted. This is one way to ensure that where you're not depending on them having the exact same plugins that you have. So hopefully that helped. Again, this is how to use Audio Suite plugins within Pro Tools. Again, I'm Joe Gilder from homestudiocorner.com. If you like this video, there's others on my YouTube channel, or you can head over to the website homestudiocorner.com. Lots of stuff there. Sign up for the newsletter, and you'll get lots of free stuff from me. Okay, we'll see you next time.